Hello everybody and welcome to Angloville's fourth ever live webinar. My name is Chris. We'll get started um, with the main topic of conversation in just a few minutes time. Uh, so just sit back and relax. We'll start in probably three minutes. Um, so grab yourself something to drink and we'll start very, very, very soon. We're just waiting for some more people to join us. If you're just joining us, my name is Chris and this is Angloville's fourth ever live webinar. We're going to get started very, very soon, so please sit back and relax and in two minutes we shall begin. If you're waiting for us to begin, which we will do in just a minute or so now, um, please feel free to introduce yourselves into the chat. Uh, welcome, for example, Anya, who's joined us already. Thanks so much for being here. If you'd like to introduce yourselves, give us a little wave or a smile or a thumbs up to say that you can hear us. Uh, that would be much appreciated. And we will get started in around one minute now. Thank you to those new people who've joined us. Welcome to the chat. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves. Lovely to see you. Hope you're uh, enjoying your days. We are going to start in just a few seconds now. So uh, sit tight and we'll be with you really soon to start today's webinar. Okay, so there are quite a few people who have now joined. I'm very, very well. Thank you very much for asking. Hope you are too. Um, let's get started. Um, for those of you who have joined us for our previous webinars, you will know that my name is Chris um, and I am the Native Speaker Coordinator Ma Manager here at Angloville. Um, I'm originally from uh, Manchester in the UK, but now living here in Poland working with Angloville. One of the great things about my job is I get to work uh, on Angloville programs all over Poland. Um, and the topic of this week's uh, webinar is to talk a little bit more about those programs. It's an opportunity for you to ask maybe some questions that are on your mind about the things that we do. Um, and so we're going to start by answering the top 10 questions that are frequently asked to our language advisors. So of course we get many, many phone calls about what it is that we do and certain people have uh, interesting questions. So we're going to go through the most common ones of those right now. And at the end, what we'll do is we'll have a live question and answer session. So everybody who's watching us right now can submit their own questions and we'll try and answer as many of those as we can at the end. So keep your ideas in mind for the last few minutes of the webinar and we will go through those ideas as well. OK, so one of the really common questions we get about our junior programs uh, is whether or not mobile phones are allowed during the program. Now, it's our opinion that we don't necessarily recommend the use of mobile phones by junior participants during most of the And the reason for that is we're not being miserable or unkind, but we find that it breaks them out of the English language immersion uh, cycle. One of the reasons that our programs are so successful is that our participants spend a long time fully immersed in the English language. Uh, and obviously, most of our participants, if they're using their phones, they're probably using it to communicate with their family, their friends from outside of the program. And probably that's in Polish. Um, also, the operating system and the apps in, in, uh, on their phones are very generally in the Polish language, too. And that's not a huge problem, but it just very, very slightly breaks them out of the English language and therefore just creates a slight barrier to being fully immersed. So if we can remove uh, that barrier, then we should. And I think that's probably a good idea to, to try and move away from the use of phones on our programs. 
Of course, obviously, as parents, uh, it's really important to know that you can have access to speak with your children when you need to. Um, and obviously, on all of our programs, uh, you have the, you know, the contact numbers of our lead coordinators. And so 24 hours a day, there is always somebody on the program you can contact, uh, if you're, even if your child doesn't immediately have access to their phone because they're engaged in speaking sessions or other activities. So that's a really, really common uh, question that we get. So our advice is that we'd like to discourage the use during the day a little bit. Um, but of course, they're not fully banned, for sure. Another question we get, and I think it has a uh, similar and related answer, is whether or not parents and grandparents can join their children uh, as a guest of the hotel during programs. Now, again, we generally don't recommend that parents and grandparents join as guests of the hotel for a very similar reason. Once again, if parents are um, present, um, the opportunities for children to speak in Polish to their parents uh, present themselves. And just one conversation in Polish allows people to, you know, jump out and fall out of the, uh, the English language immersion. So really, if we can remove that opportunity, it's a, it's a good idea, I think, to do so. It can also sometimes be a little bit harder for children to integrate with the rest of the group of, let's say, juniors. Um, because if their parents are on site, perhaps they have the, uh, the opportunity to speak with them when they could be spending time with other people around their own age. So in general, once again, we would recommend probably um, that parents uh, don't join as guests of the hotel. However, of course, there are plenty of opportunities for parents to get involved. Um, we obviously have access to family programs. And if you've not uh, yet seen our family programs, go and check them out on our website. They're really, really nice. It's a great opportunity for children and their parents to join an Angleville program together. So if you're concerned um, about what your children may be doing whilst, you're, uh, whilst they're away on a program with us, come along on a family program and then you can do activities jointly together. Um, you can take part in speaking sessions and other activities together with your child. Um, so that's a really, really nice um, opportunity and I think something that many of our uh, families like to consider. Of course, if it is you as a parent who's interested in improving your own English, we have just adult programs alone where your children can stay at home and you can come along and practice your English. So there are many, many opportunities for different levels of involvement with children and parents, either separately or together. Another question we get frequently is in, relate, uh, in relation to the age groups in which our programs operate. Um, and one of the questions we get, therefore, is can someone who's around 11 years of age join our junior programs? Well, for those of you who are not already aware, we have three age categories generally for our programs. We have the kids programs, which are for participants aged 7 to 11. And we have junior programs for those aged 12 to 19. And then we have adult programs for anybody um, 18 and above. Now, in relation to 11 year olds, um, I think the answer really is that we have to assess everybody on a kind of case by case basis. Um, so although kids programs run from 7 to 11, if we do have um, a child whose English level is particularly developed at the age of 11, it may be more appropriate for them to join our junior program. So the best thing to do really would be to, when you speak to us on the phone, to discuss your individual child's needs with us, with one of our language advisors, and they will help you to understand what the best options are for you and for your child. Similarly, um, if there is a 12 year old uh, child, it makes sense for them to be on the junior program. But if their English language level is perhaps not as well developed, it might be sensible for them to join our kids program. So it's really important. I think that these things are addressed on a case by case basis. So give us a call and we have a team of people on hand to advise as best as possible. Another question we get is about um, people attending together with uh, friends, perhaps other family members. Um, and that's an interesting question. Um, it's absolutely not true that most people come together uh, with somebody else uh, from that, that they already know, though many people choose to. Most of our participants join alone. Um, the thing is that they always, always make many, many new friends uh, on the program. So they may be traveling alone at the beginning of the program, but by the end, they'll have many, many new friends. It's just the nature of how our programs run. Every day is really, really full of activities where they're always working with other people. They can't possibly be bored. There's an awful lot uh, to keep them entertained and to keep them learning and speaking in English. And so um, the, the chances of them uh, having any issues traveling alone are very, very, very slim. We have many, many people who make lifelong friends on our programs. So we'd really encourage uh, people to, to consider coming to us alone. But of course, if you'd like to travel you know, with a friend or a family member or a group of friends, 
then that's obviously something that we can accommodate very happily. Um, and many people do so very successfully. Um, in relation to the programmes and the way in which we structure our day, people ask a lot about the recreational activities that we have on offer. Although we've got a large focus on English language immersion and running uh, speaking sessions with native English speakers, we also like to make that process as fun as possible. So in addition, we have lots of different recreational activities. We have games and group activities and joint projects, that kind of thing. Um, and we run indoor and outdoor games, depending on the weather. Also, during our junior programs, we have either a workshop where an outside company will come and join us at the hotel for a day and deliver a fun, interactive workshop with our children. Um, or we'll go on a, a day trip somewhere to a nearby attraction, a local place of interest, um, and practice using our English in a slightly different context. So, um, yeah, there are many, many things in our programs um, that uh, really allow uh, people to speak in not just a formal environment, but in a sort of slightly more casual environment, but also take all the best bits of regular summer camps, uh, but with the extra addition of native English speakers, um, and lots of other uh, speaking activities. Of course, during free time, uh, participants can also make use of the hotel facilities, and that's across all of our different program types. Um, so depending on what's available at the hotel, um, participants may choose to play games of billiards, darts, table tennis, and they may even use uh, facilities such as swimming pools in the venues where those facilities are available. So there's a wide range of recreational activities in uh, addition to our speaking sessions. Welcome, by the way, to the people who have joined us um, midway through. If you missed the beginning, you'll be able to have a look back later on our Facebook page at the beginning. And also remember, um, if you've got some questions you'd like to ask us, you can save them to the end and we will chat uh, through a live question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So another question then that we get very frequently um, is about our junior programmes and the participant age range. Uh, as we said earlier, the age range is from 12 to 19. And so people say, you know, how do you handle such a, a large age gap? Well, for a start, a significant part of our programmes is to be involved in speaking sessions with native English speakers. Um, and for one-on-one -on -one speaking sessions, we have uh, one uh, junior participant with one native speaker. So there is no need in that case to separate age groups because um, everyone has their own speaking partner. With two-on-one -on -one sessions, of course, that's very slightly different. And so we always make sure that the junior speaking participant uh, is matched up with somebody of a very similar age. So although the age range across the group is large, within their very small group for a speaking session, uh, the ages are always kept as similarly as we possibly can. Also on the uh, first full day, um, all of our native speakers will uh, assess the uh, language levels as best as, as possible of the junior participants and also then group them uh, together in not just age but also very similar language abilities so that we can really maximize the quality of those speaking sessions and obviously during other activities such as you know games and group activities again some sort of um, uh, consideration is given to the age ranges of participants and where it makes sense to group people together in uh, similar uh, ages than we do but there are certain games and activities that really it doesn't matter if you're 12 or you know 50 and they, you can still take part in those games so um, many games take place uh, as a whole group. Another question that's really common is uh, how uh, we deal with the sleeping arrangements, the rooming requirements on our programmes. Um, for adult programmes, it's super simple. Uh, each adult participant gets their own, of course. Um, and on a junior programme and kids programme, uh, there is shared accommodation. Usually the rooms hold between two to four children, depending on the, the, the requirements uh, and restrictions of the hotel. Um, of course, if uh, children are traveling together as a group of friends, then we will try as, as best as possible to accommodate them in the same room, uh, which seems to make an awful lot of sense. And just like before with the, uh, the speaking sessions and other group activities, um, we obviously will keep the age groups uh, in, in each room uh, as similar as possible. And everybody stays in a uh, single gendered room, so all of our male participants with only staying with other male participants and female participants in rooms with only other female participants. Um, if there is somebody who's traveling together, we try to avoid, wherever possible, placing a, a third member of the group or an external member of the group. So for example, if two friends travel together, uh, they'll probably be placed in a two-bedroom room, 
um, or a room where there are not other participants so that we can ensure that nobody feels left out of previously established friendship groups unless they choose that they would like to join. Okay, just three more of our prepared, uh, frequently asked questions, um, and then we will go over to some of your questions. Um, the next one, uh, how do we verify the language level of participants? That's a really good question. Um, for our uh, adult programs, uh, of course, we may have some of our participants who have previously achieved professional qualifications and certifications in English, and that really helps us to establish um, your language level. So, of course, if you've received a B2 certificate in English, then we obviously take that into account as we're having a conversation about your application to join us. It's absolutely not necessary to have a formal qualification at all, because when you, uh, before you join one of our programmes, our uh, English uh, methodologist will phone you and arrange an interview to speak with you directly, first in Polish to understand your needs and requirements, and then also to speak a little while in English to try and establish uh, what your language level might be. And we only use this um, as a way of making sure during the programmes we can provide you with speaking session materials that are as suited to your language level as possible. Um, so it's a really important process for us. It's a very informal conversation, um, but a really, really useful tool in helping us to, uh, to assess which materials we should provide during your stay with us. During uh, the junior programmes and the kids programmes, the, the way that the language assessment works is a little bit different. Uh, we don't uh, pre-assess any of those conversations. Of, of course, we have um, our parents will speak um, with uh, our language advisors on the phone when, when speaking about our programmes, and there'll, there'll be an informal conversation about your children's ability then. Um, but actually, at the end of the first day, as I said earlier, all of our junior participants, we will talk about uh, which groups they most likely fit into so that we can ensure that their speaking partners for the rest of the week are a similarly matched level. Um, and on our kids' programmes, most of what we do is in small groups uh, with the support of an English native speaker per group. So actually the variation in English language level, even within those groups, is less crucial on, uh, on a kids' programme. So there is no real need for a formal assessment. Your judgment, along with our advice, will help um, to decide whether or not that's appropriate. Another question we get very frequently um, is about well, what do we actually speak about? What do our participants speak about with uh, the mentors on the programmes? Well, the topics we discuss are actually incredibly varied. On all of our adult programmes, uh, we talk about almost anything, really. Um, we've got sessions about just general conversational English, shopping, hobbies, sport, leisure, those kinds of things. But we can also um, talk about business and marketing and finance and those things, if it's something that you think is important and interesting to your career, your job, and your own interests. But of course we talk about other things too, family life, travel, politics, um, and we have different types of sessions such as role plays and my personal favourite which are negotiations which are, can be incredibly fun. Um, one of, definitely one of my personal favourites. On the junior programmes we have a very similar uh, approach, a very similar style and a huge variety of conversation topics but they're more centred generally around the needs and the feelings and expectations of teenagers. So we talk a little bit about schools and future plans, but also about things like technology and the use of, use of social media. We talk about music and street art and just anything that we believe that teenagers may be interested in talking about. And on the kids program, we generally have um, slightly more functional English about daily routines, about family life, about school, about their hobbies and interests. Uh, really practical English that is quite usable instantly in everyday uh, conversation. But obviously, really importantly, the most important thing is that people are able to speak in English about anything. So during the course of the week, we speak about, speak about all kinds of topics that are not written on our conversation uh, materials. So if people want to spend 30 minutes talking about their cute, fluffy, fluffy little cat, then absolutely fine. We enjoy those conversations just as much as the slightly more structured ones. The final question is a really, really important one for parents. If you're sending your child to work on one of our junior programmes or kids programmes, of course, you want to know how we're taking care of them in your absence. Obviously, that's our absolute priority on all of our junior and kids programmes. To start with, all of the programmes, of course, are registered uh, with the Education Ministry. And there is one Polish mentor per 20 participants on our junior programmes and one Polish mentor per 10 on our kids programs. Um, and our team of educators are 
course, fully qualified and incredibly well trained to be able to do their jobs and, and um, also very experienced uh, with Angloville and with other teaching uh, experience as well. And really crucially, they can speak to your children in Polish and in English. So although our programs are very much about speaking English and gaining confidence in doing so, we just know that there are times when it's really important for children to be able to express themselves in their first language. So um, if that is ever a concern, there's always someone who's able to speak to our, to our children uh, in their native language. We also, in our junior and kids programs, always have a ded dedicated health and safety coordinator whose job is really, really important uh, to make sure everybody on our programs is safe, well, happy and well cared for. So they look after all kinds of things like essential medical supplies. If your children need to be taking medication, they will oversee that process uh, in your absence. Um, they make sure we're working to the education uh, ministry's guidelines and that we're following all of the, the health and safety requirements that we would need to to make sure everyone is safe. And of course, they're also working alongside the hotel staff and the management of the hotel to ensure that the hotel is also providing the level of care that all of our participants and members of staff uh, expect. And of course, on any of our programs where there is access to a swimming pool, there is always a qualified lifeguard on site uh, at all of the times when a junior participant or kid participant is able to access it. So that's really, really how we, uh, we look after those children. Now, that is the end of the, uh, the questions that we have uh, already received in advance and, and prepared for you. Uh, and now it's time to go over to our live question and answer session. So I'll give you a short amount of time now. If you have something you'd like to ask us, then please uh, type it in the comments. And I will try and go through as many as possible in the time that we have left. Um, so if you'd like to type something, then please feel free to do so. I think what we'll do is we'll start by uh, answering the question that is on everybody's mind all around the world, which is about the impact of the coronavirus COVID-19 on our programs. Now, of course, we are very well aware that there are currently in many countries, including in Poland, certain restrictions. But we've been working very closely with the Education Ministry and following government guidelines. And it is our full intention to run our programs in the summer exactly as intended. Now, of course, the most important thing is that we will only run those programs when we know for sure that it is safe and responsible and reasonable to do so. And just like everybody else in the world, what we will be doing is following government advice. We have uh, no choice but to do that, and that's the right thing. But at the moment, the most up-to-date information that we have is that our summer will go ahead as planned, and our junior kids and adult programs will proceed. So at the moment, we have lots of reasons to be optimistic. We have still a very dedicated team of people here in Poland who are working very hard to make sure our summer and beyond is executed in the way that we expect it to. Now, of course, if that situation changes, then we have to adapt and be flexible to that situation. But at the moment, our plan is to continue. And obviously, as soon as we are 100% sure we can do so safely and our service delivery partners, such as hotels, are also able to ensure the same, then we'll proceed as planned. Um, and if we need to make some adjustments along the way, then that's what we'll do. And obviously, we'll keep you informed. If you ever have any questions about a program, perhaps that you're interested in signing up to or already have signed up to, you can just call one of the team in our office. And of course, they will give you the most up-to-date information that we have at the time. Uh, okay, if you have any more questions, please do um, have uh, a little look in the chat and send the question to us, and I will have a little look at that. If you can write your question in English, that would be super helpful. My Polish is not so good. Um, but otherwise, if you f feel more comfortable to write in Polish, one of my colleagues will help to uh, translate for my benefit. So we'll give it just a couple more minutes to see if any questions, and hello to all of the people who have just joined or that have joined since I was speaking. You're very, very welcome. If you missed the start, you can always go back at the end when the video will be posted on our Facebook page. We'll wait just a couple more minutes to see if you have any questions about uh, the Angloville programs that we're running, either our kids' programs, remember that's from age 7 to 11, our junior programs aged 12 to 19, or our adult programs for 18 and over. There are three program types, our main program types. We, of course, also have family programs and international programs. If you're interested in learning about any of those, then you can visit our website, but also feel free to ask a question right now and we'll try and answer you live.
Okay, we have a question about where our native English speakers are from. It's a good question. Um, we're really, really lucky at Angleville. One of the things I enjoy most about my job, I think, is that I get to meet people from all over the world, not just from here in Poland. So our native speakers come from many different countries. Um, many of them come from the UK. Uh, and one of the great things about uh, our participants, uh, our, our native speakers from the UK, is that uh, the UK has many, many, many different accents. Um, and so somebody from the north of Scotland speaks very differently to somebody from London and somebody from Northern Ireland speaks very differently to someone from Manchester like me. Um, so we have people from the UK who come from a variety of different places. It's a really nice way of challenging yourself to see if you can understand the English of people from a lot of different parts of the UK. But of course, it's not just from the UK that we receive uh, our lovely native speakers. They also come from the USA, from Canada, from Australia, from New Zealand, from South Africa from all kinds of countries where English is spoken as an official language. So we have many, many different voices and sounds for you to practice uh, hearing. And of course, there are many um, examples of where certain spellings and certain pronunciations are slightly different in different parts of the English speaking world. So it's a really, really good opportunity to find an English style that really suits you. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I really, really enjoy uh, about the programs that we run. We have another question here. How long does each program last? We have a, a few different types of programs. So our junior programs and our kids programs are seven days long. Our adult programs um, are uh, six days long, uh, very slightly shorter. But we also offer weekend programs that run for a shorter time for those of us who perhaps have a little bit less uh, time with uh, other work commitments. And they run from Friday till Sundays, uh, most generally. Um, and so uh, there are different, different levels of flexibility. We also, as I said earlier, have uh, things like international programs which run over uh, like a 10-day period and they operate in countries such as the UK and in Malta. So we have a variety of program lengths depending on uh, your needs and your uh, age group too. Do I know Scottish Elevator? No, I've been to Scotland many, many times, um, but I'm not sure. Maybe you could uh, elaborate on what you mean. Welcome also to the people who've joined in the last uh, few minutes. I see some new people are with us at the moment. Thank you for being here. Can you learn something about culture during programs? Yes, absolutely, very much so. Um, one of the great things about having people together from all over different parts of the world uh, is that they have the opportunity to share their experiences of, of living in different countries, of growing up in different countries. Um, as I said, many of our native speakers come from all over the world. Um, we have a very, um, uh, very specific cultural session on our, on our junior program, um, but actually it's just as important that in social time and free time and during entertainment activities that there is just that opportunity to have conversation with people, to ask your own questions. It doesn't have to be a structured thing. You know, we share meal times together. We share all kinds of social time together. So there's a really great opportunity to ask questions about people's cultures from all over the world. And again, it's by far one of my favorite things about our programs is the way we can bring people together and, uh, and share and learn from each other. So yes, um, that's a, it's a really, really good aspect of our programs, not just about the, the languages, but it's also about uh, people's culture from around the world, absolutely. I think we'll, um, we'll wait for maybe one more minute to see if you have any final questions before we, we finish today's webinar. Of course, as I said earlier, if you'd like to go back and look at the beginning when it's posted live on our Facebook page, Shortly after the webinar ends live, then you are able to do so and watch it back as many times as you would like. Are there some games or other activities? Yes, we, we've got a really, really um, lovely program of uh, games, of group activities, um, uh, as well as our regular speaking program. So um, we have uh, on our junior programs, for example, we have dedicated activity leaders who are designed to create an engaging and fun schedule of uh, social games and activities and outdoor games and indoor games too. Um, that's a really, really fun part of the program and we, we have dedicated people assigned to do that. On our adult programs, uh, just as much, we, we do have every evening, there are always games and activities that people are allowed to enjoy um, uh, in a slightly more social and relaxed uh, atmosphere. It's really important we feel that uh, people are able to use English not just in a formal speaking uh, situation, but in a slightly more relaxed environment too. So games and, and other activities are really, really important parts of what we do. Okay, well, I think we will come to the end of today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and giving us uh, your time. 
Um, please feel free to suggest other topics of conversation that we could have in future webinars. We are planning to uh, speak with you every week, so please feel free to suggest something you'd like us to cover in a future topic, and we will do our best to accommodate you. So thank you so much for being here, and we look forward to speaking to you again soon.